Hey, good morning, everybody. I want to talk a bit more about the Ukraine-Russia conflict uh, today. Uh, we need to do that. Uh, I'm going to call this uh, video here Four Levels of Truth. Um, so the first level is this, and this is what you're getting from the mainstream media. Not that this is truth, actually, because you can't trust uh, anything that comes from the Western mainstream media. It's a pack of lies and propaganda all the way through from start to finish, as is whatever utterances come from the main political parties, whether it's Tory and Labour uh, in um, the... Uh, UK, um, Liberal and Labour in Australia, you know, they all lie uh, continuously about situations like this. But if you listen to the Western mainstream media, what they're telling you is that Putin has invaded Ukraine for no reason whatsoever. And he's killing and maiming millions of people for no reason at all. And that then justifies the very, very sinister stirring up of hatred against the Russian people in general, uh, you know, and um, which I, I find very, very um, terrible because you, you've now got Russians living in the West who are being bullied at school. Kids are being bullied at school. People are finding that they're um, being discriminated against, being abused and harassed because they're Russian, um, you, you know, which is absolutely wrong. There's, you know, whatever you think about Putin, not all Russian people support Putin. Uh, some do, some don't. There's a mix, just like in the West. There's a mix of people. Some support Boris. I have no idea why. Some don't. In America, some support Biden. Again, I've got no idea why, but some don't. So you have a mix of opinions. So, you know, the Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Brigade will say about everything else, you know, don't, um, you, you know, judge a book by its cover, you, you know, you mustn't discriminate against a, a group, but then now it's coming to Russians, suddenly uh, we can have blanket discrimination and that's considered a good thing. Um, when it's not, you know, it's it's very, very sinister and it's, it's, um, it, it's frankly, well, frankly, wicked, to be honest, to, to, to treat someone badly because... Um, you, you, your leader's done something. Now, I'll come on to that uh, it, now, because the second thing, okay, the second level, which you're not going to get from the Western mainstream media, is that um, Putin has gone into Ukraine because of certain reasons and things he wants to address and put right in his eyes. Um, first of all, there is the terrible treatment of the Russian minority in eastern Ukraine, in the Donbass, who for eight years have been shelled and attacked by the Ukrainian army uh, with the help of neo-Nazi battalions like the Azov uh, Brigade, um, which operates out of Mariupol. Uh, and they are then funded by Western governments, particularly the British government and the American government, have been funding neo-Nazi groups to attack the ethnic Russian minorities. That's a fact. It's not going to be on the mainstream media, but that is true. And uh, Putin has gone in to try to address that and stop the Russian minorities who declared independence from being attacked and oppressed. Also, NATO has been agitating to expand into Ukraine. And after the fall of the Berlin Wall, 30 years ago now, there was the general understanding that there was no Cold War anymore. The Cold War was over. There was no more conflict between NATO and the Warsaw Pact. The Warsaw Pact essentially disbanded. And then NATO was not going to push into the east. But NATO expanded to the east five times. Russia was much weaker, obviously, in the 90s and the, the 2000s decades. Um, but now it's trying to expand actively into Ukraine. And Russia doesn't like that. And the, see, the thing is, if NATO expanded into Ukraine, they would then claim Crimea. Uh, and in Crimea, 
uh, there is Sevastopol, and in Sevastopol is the location of one of Russia's two biggest naval bases in the world. And Russia's not going to give that up. Putin's not going to give that up. But you, NATO was agitating to go in and then take that back. And that would have created a hot war anyway. So it's like a preemptive strike and um, very much similar to when Bush and Blair had a preemptive strike into Iraq because they said Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction. So they've got to go in and bomb the place and take over the country and neutralize the weapons of mass destruction. So that's the same rationale that Putin has got for going into Ukraine. They don't want NATO to, to go in there and there's really no weapons there or now, but they're worried about nuclear weapons being stationed there in the future and pointing at Moscow. So whatever you think of that, that's their rationale. The trouble is we've now got complete censorship of uh, anything from Russia. You know, RT has been taken off the air, which is very chilling for free speech. And, you know, the, I saw these delegates in the United Nations, when Lavrov came up and he, he wanted to speak to people, they all just walked out like a bunch of children saying, oh, we're virtue signaling, we're good, because we're not even going to listen to this bad Russian. It, you know, th there's so much childishness and escalation of tensions and warmongering, which is really, really unhelpful. You know, what you've got to know your enemy, you know, Sun Tzu, Art of War, it says know yourself, know your enemy. So if, you, if you're not even going to make any attempt to know your enemy, I don't consider Russia to be uh, our enemy. Uh, we're not at war with Russia. Um, got to try, whatever you think, you've got to try to understand what they're doing and where they're coming from so you can try to de-escalate the situation because we don't want a nuclear war between the two nuclear powers. We've got to avoid that at any cost. So we've got to de-escalate this um, as much as we can. Okay, so that's the second thing that I'd say. There's the Putin's rationale for what's going on, which you don't get uh, in the mainstream. The third level, I don't know if this is true or not, but they could all be working for the same side. You know, th this could be just kabuki theatre, if you like, with, unfortunately uh, and tragically, real casualties among the Ukrainian people. Because Zelensky is in the World Economic Forum. Putin is in the World Economic Forum. Most of the leaders of NATO are in the World Economic Forum. They're all in the World Economic Forum together. And it doesn't matter whether it's Ukraine, Russia, UK, USA, Canada, all the governments there, West and East, for the last two years have been following the COVID narrative, locking down destroying small businesses, then rolling out the genetic injections of experimental mRNA uh, into uh, the populations. And people are now dying of heart attacks and falling over and having all kinds of adverse health events and effects from these injections. So it doesn't matter whether you're in the UK under Johnson or in Russia under Putin, these injections have been rolled out, the governments have been coercing people to get them, and even kicking people out of their jobs if they don't get a jab, and putting in place the framework for a future digital identity, cashless society with central bank digital currency, and a social credit system uh, like the type are now operated by the Chinese Communist Party. That's happened in the West. That's happened in Russia. Just the same. There's no difference. They're all following the World Economic Forum's plan and script. Well, they have been for the last two years uh, over the COVID narrative. So essentially, they're all on the same side. And, you know, we see the narrative in the West. You see the narrative in Russia. But 
They're all following the World Economic Forum's plans for a future society with digital identity and social credit. There's no difference. So is this just another crisis that has been manufactured in order to bring in the Great Reset? Now, again, I don't know uh, for sure, but that's quite a possibility, quite a real possibility that, you know, you can look at this and you can look at that, but the truth is something different to the official narrative and the counter narrative that there's something deeper going on here, that this is all part of the Great Reset. Because at the end of the day, you know, the sanctions that the West is putting in place against Russia is not going to hurt the Russian government. It's not going to hurt Putin and the oligarchs. It's not going to hurt the Russian military. It's going to hurt the Russian people. Um, you know, the West has then, West has taken uh, seven of the smaller Russian banks out of the SWIFT system so they can't uh, do payments internationally. But the biggest bank, Spare Bank, um, is still in the SWIFT system. And that is like, um, I, I, you know, I, the Corbett report is a very good uh, source of information. So yeah, I'd recommend you look at that as well as UK Column as another source, a very good source of information. But, you know, one of their latest reports, uh, so I learned something I didn't know, that Spare Bank, the Russia's biggest bank, is, is now like, a, it's more than a bank, it's like a, a corporation that does everything. It's like Amazon and Tesco and Barclays all rolled into one. A bank, a, a delivery service for everything, and it will give you the food as well. And it will do something like Uber. It's a like, transportation system. So, you know, this is like almost fascism, if you like. You've got a private company um, that is... Uh, allowed by the government to operate. The smaller businesses, independent businesses, are put out of business. Everything goes into these big private companies that are private but controlled by the government, just like they want to do in the West. Uh, over the last two years, small businesses have gone to the wall uh, and gone bankrupt because of the so-called COVID measures. So, you know, when this is all over and done, Putin may still be there. Johnson and Biden may still be there. They're banging the drums against each other. But who's going to lose, whether it's in Russia or the West or Ukraine? Ordinary, everyday people suffer. People who just want to get on with their lives, bring up their families, go about their business, try to get on in life and find some happiness. And their lives are being destroyed and ruined by people who are all aligned to the World Economic Forum. So there you go. That's the third level. Now, the fourth level is this. And this is a little bit more tenuous and perhaps a little bit more into the realms of conspiracy. But, uh, you know... Uh, as uh, as the, uh, the the new joke goes, if you like, what's the difference between a conspiracy theory and reality? About six months. Look, the World Economic Forum is there. We've all heard of it. We've all heard of the Bilderberg Group now. We all know that Bill Gates and George Soros and Klaus Schwab are, are, are people of a certain power level that are pulling the strings of the New World Order and the Great Reset. But they're just the front people. And there are people behind the scenes that you're never going to see that are way, way higher up than Klaus Schwab and Bill Gates and George Soros and people you've heard of um, that are um, pulling the scenes, pulling the strings behind the scenes. Again, there's no absolute proof of this. But I'll just leave you with a thought. This was a very interesting thing that was on the, the news yesterday, that there was um, apparently a Russian missile strike on a town, I think it was called Chernihiv. And the reports were that some people had died. Uh, before there was you know, even any chance to, to count how many people 
had died in this this missile attack that they say happened, you got immediately all over the news. 33 people killed in Chernihiv. 33. If you know what that means, you know what that means.